yeah, it's a, it's a mixture of philosophical shift and practical shift and trying to start from both ends and get them to, to meet in the middle. And so I think one of the, one of the thoughts that I find myself trying to, trying to express or trying to work out in both of these places now is about how we better share operationally and philosophically our strategic objectives with the smaller companies who surround us in the region. Um, and the ways that that is beginning to manifest is either in a, a different type of conversation, so at the moment we're having a lot of conversations with the smaller companies about their NPO applications and those conversations are much more being framed around what are, what are their strategic objectives and also what are their qualitative um, agendas. So. I think it's quite easy to assume that every other organization is working on the same abstract metrics than you are, but trying to better understand what it is companies are trying to achieve and how they measure that success um, is proven very useful. So on the one side, there's us sharing strategic objectives with the company and then seeing how we can um, construct projects together that are meeting those ends together and trying to look at where is overlap productive, where do actually we need to retool a little bit so there isn't overlap. Um, and then on the other side where we um, are raising money through trust and foundations or through individual givers in order to address some of our major strategic objectives. So, you know, things around um, social cohesion, about social mobility, about um, integration of new migrant groups into uh, traditional Newcastle communities, that do all that kind of work, looking at having, having successfully raised monies from trust and foundations, how we can then um, employ a smaller company to deliver that work on our behalf. Um, and that the fruits of that, I hope, I mean, we're not there yet, but that the fruits of that are not only increased resilience and financial stability for those companies, but a much closer, more complicated, more integrative, more practice-based relationship between us and those artists, um, and how this serves a, a wider, longer agenda for Northern Stage to, I keep talking about turning the organisation inside out, and about how more of our assets become community assets, and more of our activity becomes community activity. And I think that's a, a wider agenda for large building based companies all over the place but the thinking through this process has been very valuable in relation to that. So I think the, you know, the benefits of working in that way for Northern Stage are quite clear but as part of it, as was what you could call a more empathetic process it's also trying to walk around the other side and go okay so what are the benefits for the smaller companies in relation to that. So there's a, a clear bit about um, stability and income and about being paid you know fairly significant amounts of money on a medium term, you know, an 18-month, two-year contract in order to deliver a thing which for a company, you know, let's say that's a, you know, a, a commission to deliver a program of work which is £20,000 over 18 months. For a company who's turning over £50,000, £60,000 a year, suddenly that gives a, a really solid base of income stream which, and I mean, one of the very interesting things that came out of the research was the the enormous difficulty that a lot of these companies face in being able to create time and space to think and operate strategically. Um, and hugely wrapped up in that is constantly having to raise money in order to deliver work. And the, the, the balance of that, you know, the, the work delivered and the bit where you're being paid for the work delivered really is just the tip of the iceberg. And there's the other 80%, which is the unpaid work in order to build the relationships, in order to um, generate the funds and particularly for the non-NPO based companies that's the tyranny and that's the the cycle which people get trapped in that you work exceptionally hard in order to deliver projects which are not and were never intended to be and do not want to be income generating but do give significant real social impact and value and creative output and you know all of these much more ephemeral benefits um, so I think one of the things that the process has made very clear to us is the, the opportunity and the responsibility we have as an organisation to not to 
not in any way to do those companies' strategic thinking for them, but to operate in a collegiate way to help them to create space to think in that way and to be able to express to funders, to partners, to themselves, to stakeholders what those agendas are. Um, I think that, I mean, for me personally, as as a director and as an artistic director, the going through this process has, has I'm looking at companies in a different way, and I'm pulling back and and trying to step away from a lot of my assumptions, a lot of my unconscious biases about why things are the way they they are, and you know. It's very easy to look at companies and go, well, why are you do it? It would be so much easier if you did it that way. It would be, you know, you would make more money, you would find more funding, you would do it that way. But it's against a whole set of criteria <laughs> to say that if doing it that way is possible <laughs> for you or not. So I think that's a sort of a, a, a space where both, yeah, there are very real benefits for both sides. And the less, again, the less tangible bit is it, it brings the companies much closer together and from there other things can can rule out but trying to you know, this this idea of the collegiate and the the non-hierarchical and the relationship between those with more assets and with more stability and those with fewer assets and with less stability it's not a hierarchical relationship it's a relationship of different skills